morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to the session. Um, didn't expect that much of a turnout, uh, but thank you. Um, really appreciate it. So I'm Caroline Monsieur. I head up the marketing team for Jack Daniels in the UK. Hi, everyone. I'm Marcos. I'm uh, Chief Strategy Officer at Spark, uh, Jack Daniels uh, Media Agency partner. And today, we're here to tell you about some bold decisions we've made on the brand over the last three years. So um, let's crack on. So hopefully, when I say Jack Daniels didn't see whiskey, you're familiar with the brand. Uh, some of you can even picture the square bottle, the black label, the distinctive assets. Um, the brand's been going strong for 150 years. It's truly iconic globally and in the UK. And part of the success um, behind the brand is obviously first um, amazing craftsmanship in whiskey making, but also um, amazing storytelling in advertising and um, a little bit of that. Um, that's early adoption culture, friends that were there. Um, so it goes well back um, before the times and the world of influencers as we know it today. Those people were just happy um, to endorse the brand. Um, so a strong, iconic brand. So the marketing challenge when you take on a brand like that has to be a, a long-term one. Um, it's about making sure that whatever the times the brand lives in, it's meaningful. It means something to people. So it's really about recruitment and recruitment of the next generation of consumers. So a long-term view. Now, back in 2019, um, in the middle of uh, the pink jean boom for a black brand, um, we take a good look at the brand, at what we say, how we turn up in the world, and we decide that it's time to reinvigorate what Jack um, stands for and um, how it turns up in the world. So we're going to tell you about three things we've done. Over the last three years, actually, we've done hopefully more than that, but those are where three bold things we decided to do. I'll start with the bold creative move. Um, Marcos will tell you about, about the bold investment posture and then bold innovation. And spoiler alert, we're not meaning, we're not, we're not about product innovation here. All right. So um, it's started with creative. And that's where, for a second, I'm going to take credit for the amazing work that the global brand team did. Oh, not mine, I wish I could claim that. Um, what we wanted to do is to make sure that we um, still, you know, show what Jack, um, why Jack is so special, what makes it unique, but more in a more modern and bold way. And that meant being part of um, our audience world. So um, I haven't got the TVC to show you, that's global work. What I chose to do is to show you UK creative work. And hopefully if you're a Londoner and if you looked at um, some of the Jack ads in the London underground, you would be familiar with that. Um, so just to show you what we wanted to do in terms of being more modern and being part of the audience world, um, this is an ad we used to have um, in January, for dry January, actually. And, and you can see we're celebrating the whiskey making credentials from a barrel house in Lynchburg. Now, we still celebrate the whiskey, but we also celebrate the drink in a home environment. And um, that's why people can relate it much more. You still get the tone of voice of the brand, which is so special, and we're very proud of that. But hopefully you can see how we've moved, um, moved on and, and make the brand more relevant and look and feel more like uh, of today's time. Um, we've got another one. Hopefully you've seen that one if you've traveled through London recently. Um, this one was up, I think, up to last month. And again, we used to celebrate our history, um, our heritage, and again, the whiskey making credentials. Uh, but now we also celebrate the whiskey but the role of whiskey in people's lives around celebrating good times and enjoying good times. So again, I hope you see the type of creative evolution and, and move we've made. Um, my final one, um, which I really like, is one for December. Jack is a very well-received present uh, or gift at Christmas. Um, so again, you know, type of advertising where we would talk about decorated whiskey at Christmas. But now, we acknowledge that Jack is a great present, but it's more than just the gift, it's also the moment. All these creatives I've shared with you just now lives under the platform called Make It Count. So Make It Count is our invitation um, to enjoy the ride, basically, you know, to celebrate uh, big and small moments, whatever they are. Um, 
So that's, that's the first step we took, the bold creative move. I let um, Marcus talk about the money, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is a big part of the story too. Thank you. So, right, as Caroline said, we have this big, new, bold creative, which you guys have seen. The next step was ensuring that everyone within the category had the opportunity to see it, which meant an equally bold investment in media. Now, for lovers and you know, people that understand marketing effectiveness, this is, should be an easy conversation to have. We all know the work of uh, uh, Byron Sharp, with how brands grow, of Mark Ritson with excess share of voice. Ultimately, brands that, in, uh, that reach all category buyers with a greater level of intensity than their competitors win out and drive the long-term growth that the business was looking for. Now, Jack Daniels as a team get this. They probably know marketing effectiveness better than anyone else. They understand it, they see its value, they apply it. So for an agency sign, for a strategist like me, it's a dream. I get to work with a marketing division that really understand the work, they love it. I get to wang on about research all day, we share the studies, we talk about the implications, we discuss the, the, what we could do with it, it's, it's fantastic. And yet even with a business like that that's as sophisticated as they are, it doesn't mean we get a free pass when it comes to budgets, it doesn't mean we can just ask for whatever we want. We still need to make sure that we, we absolutely guarantee and we can prove the value of every pound that we spend for the business within the UK. Now that applies in the best of years, but obviously during this story, most of it happened in the middle of COVID, where brands were doing everything they could to survive. You know, they were cutting back on all unnecessary spend, particularly in certain categories such as alcohol, where you know they were so badly affected by the closure of, uh, of the on-trade and through through lockdown. So we had to have a watertight case to make our to make our points and to ultimately show that an increase in uh, increased um, spend in marketing wasn't a cost against the P&L, but an investment against the future growth of the business. So to do that, we had to turn to data and ultimately use modeling to make our, make our claim. Now, MMM studies, marketing mix models are brilliant for a number of reasons, but they also have challenges. They're fantastic at looking backwards, not as great at looking forwards. They can absolutely predict the contribution of marketing for previous campaigns, but not always as sufficient when they're looking forward to future campaigns. So, we had to build our own dynamic forecaster to sit on top of the MMMs in order to predict with a really high level of certainty the contribution that every pound of media would make and to do it across multiple scenarios because there were so many different outputs that could happen during COVID. There were so many social macroeconomic conditions. We had to have multiple scenarios to see what it would look like. Now, together we worked on this. The, the important was having a methodology everybody bought into that was transparent, that we all agreed on and then to work through the stages. And we found a couple of key steps. The first one was we quickly identified a clear link between sales and brand consideration. Now, this wasn't a soft correlation. This was a direct causal event. For every percentage point increase in consideration, we saw a direct and very specific impact in terms of incremental sales. So from there, we could start to predict and show the thresholds of media. So for every percentage point increase, how much media it would take to get there, and therefore what the return on sales was. The final step, the most important, which we see here, is predicting the sweet spots. So how much should we invest? Where's the biggest opportunity to drive incremental sales before we hit any form of diminishing return? And this was one of the killer slides, because we showed what we were previously investing, and the missed opportunity in sales, and what we could invest, and what it would bring back without it just becoming throwing money hand, uh, uh, hand over fist. So we packaged this all up, we, we wrote it into a business case, we took it back to the organization, but ultimately we let the unbiased data and the transparent methodology do the talking for us. So in a year where brands were significantly pushing back, pulling back on marketing spends, the uh, Jack Daniels uh, organization approved a 125% increase to the marketing budget. So this is a really powerful way to show that marketing can be reframed from a cost to an investment if you've got the right data and if you've got the right teams to be able to put that story together. So once we had the, the investment, the final way that we made it count was through innovation, through brilliant planning, media expertise and, and use of technology with key partners. And the first major channel with Jack Daniels was always about uh, AV. It's absolutely critical for them. Um, with the type of, Jack, uh, type of brand Jack Daniels is and the associations it has, it often ends up in programming that's very high octane, high energy, so live sports, music, uh, major movies, brilliant content, stuff that you always want to be associated with. 
But more and more, particularly in a world where you've got lower attention, a lot of that, that high energy, high talkability programming means that people during the, the breaks are talking to each other from using social media rather than always looking at the ads that we hope they're looking at on the TV screen. So the way to balance that is to make sure Jack is front and center regardless of the touch point they're looking at. So working with uh, different data providers, Sky and others like that, we were able to marry up our social media activity with our TV activity. So the simplest version of it is, when the TV ads were playing, we had a significant upweight in social media at the same time. So regardless of which device people were looking at, Jack was right there, right in the, in the, in the key part of their attention. That technology can also be used against competitors, effectively. So we can, we can synchronize it with competitor activity. So when another brand is advertising within the category, again, Jack is able to have maximum share of voice in social media. And therefore, you can effectively piggyback on other competitor campaigns, use their budgets to your advantage. And that's really important for any brand that isn't the market leader, finding ways like that that you can piggyback and use their advantages to your own gain. And we did that. <laughs> So from there, we then continued that, those areas of association, particularly in the world of music. So everyone has probably got a, an association and knows the relationship that Jack Daniels already has with music. Caroline touched on it earlier, but particularly the challenge is that a lot of those associations are quite classic. It's all American classic culture. It's a lot of rock bands, it's a lot of guitar. Um, it's not necessarily what the younger people within the UK are looking at, as much as it pains me to say, their, their music interests are quite different to what mine might be. So we had to understand what that type of audience was looking at, these, these growth younger audiences, understanding the different genres, understanding the, the areas of relevance. And that worked us into the, the world of grime. So working with major artists like Hardy Caprio, like Lost Girl, the brand put on a major gig in the centre of London, inviting the very best, most influential, most engaged uh, people from around uh, the city. But again, to make sure that all of this is about reach, we had to make sure it was amplified beyond the capital. So working with uh, major radio stations, with streaming platforms, uh, we were able to, to make a, an, we were able to amplify the content out further, make it feel like a natural extension of the airtime they were naturally getting. The final point, we've got five minutes left, is uh, at the lower end uh, of the funnel, at points of purchase. So Amazon was absolutely critical during that time, as everyone knows. The key point for us was using, working with the Amazon teams and utilizing the API and their insights to discover areas of opportunity that others were missing. So one of the simplest but most powerful insights we found was that, that alcohol was a key gifting category during COVID, which makes sense. You send a bottle of something nice to a loved one at Christmas and a birthday to friends and family. But the thing is that nobody was doing anything around that insight. So we, we decided to jump into it, take advantage. So we built out the world's first FMCG gifting site within Amazon to give people a, a deeper experience. So this is where people could come along, they could find uh, gifting experiences, they could see the different products, see the full portfolio of Jack Daniels, select and ultimately customize the gifts that they were sending to people. Now this is very, it's very nice, very interactive, it's very, very simple, and yet the output was absolutely huge. So people that interacted with the gifting page bought twice as many bottles as an average buyer. More importantly, they spent three times as much. The basket value increased threefold, which was people were trading up to give to loved ones. So a simple experience at the lower funnel had profound impact for the business and a long-term opportunity. It's also, the final point I'll just make is, it's a nice reminder that creativity can happen at any stage of the funnel. Often we see creativity and creative thinking and innovation being upper funnel. It's all brand-led activities. It's got just as much of a right to play lower funnel, point of purchase. As long as you've got teams that care about integrated solutions uh, and excited about performance marketing. So don't, don't sell your performance team short. Invite them to the creative sessions. They might just surprise you. Right, so final slide from us. Um, all of that for what? So, you know, that's two or three years of work in um, 10 slides. <laughs> The first thing we achieved was um, the share of voice when it mattered. So October to December, that's where we need to cut through, and that's what we did. And obviously, you saw um, the level of investment that went in, um, plus the context of COVID and um, competitors pulling out. Uh, we went boldly in there and obviously cut through, um, getting number one share of voice at that time. Um, the second thing we saw 
17% in brand consideration, so people who are willing to consider you um, as part of their drink repertoire. And as Mark was said, there is a direct relationship between brand consideration, short-term sales, and long-term sales. And that's where my boss was happy. Um, and then the final one is, um, is also knowing how you perform the series of competitive set. And we're not just looking at whiskey, obviously Jack Johnson's whiskey, it's a spirits brand. Um, and we also um, climb up the ranks in terms of um, biggest spirits brand in the UK over the last three years. Uh, and again, that's where the stakeholders are, are happy. The one thing I would want to leave you with as we're running out of time is when you, you taking the long term view is a bold move because Every day, you have to fight but internally to say, no, bear with me. Like, you won't see results straight away, but bear with me. This is going to work. And, and God knows how many meetings we've had with finance and internally the conversations, which didn't look as pretty as the slides, to make it happen. But uh, more importantly, I think if you're a true brand builder, you need to be comfortable with the idea that what you started, the full potential of that, you may not end up seeing it. Um, you may be in another role, you know, three, four years down the line, you may have changed job and someone else will get the job after you, may just reap the benefits of what you've started. And that's, that's, to me, that's what's bold in being a brand builder, is knowing that you lit the flame, you, still, you sow the seed, you build, you build, but you may move on before you see really the true impact of what you've done. Thank you, Thank you very much. for listening to us.